Hi, welcome back to Colt KRC. So today we're going to view something a little bit different and it's a little cheap action camera that you can pick up from Amazon. This is the Victor A800. Now, a while ago, about six, seven months ago, I reviewed the A700, which I didn't mind at all. It isn't the best quality in the world. It's not GoPro footage, but for the price of it, it's a decent camera. So this is the A800 and what they've done is this. They've upgraded the screen is sharper. Uh, the image to me looks better, but the main thing is they've updated the menu on the back. The other one came with like a microphone that you could get. It came with a microphone that plugged into the side. This one doesn't. This one just comes with a stock built-in microphone. Comes with no SD card, but it does come with a pair of batteries and accessory kit. The accessory kit is your standard fare that you get with all these type of cameras. So let me just show you. This is the A700 that I reviewed. And as you can see, they're almost identical. The only difference really is that this has got a slope top and bottom on the back. But the main difference is on the back. So let me just power it up and show you. I much prefer the menu on this. Let's just turn it on. Right, so I'll boot the other one up if it's got a battery in it. Haven't used it for a while. I'd imagine it will have. Yeah. So... These are the two, and as you can see, there's much more information now on the screen at the back. So the screen doesn't look brighter, but it's actually better to view outside. So with this one, it, you couldn't really see what you were doing outside, even though the screen looks brighter. With this one, it's fine. I don't know what I've done there. Turn the Wi-Fi on and off. But the biggest change on this is the menu. So let me show you the menu on this one first. So this was the menu on this, this is your video settings, etc, general settings, language. And this is very much the type of thing you see on most of these cheap action cams. They've all got a very, very similar menu on there. But it, did, it does its job. This one had electronic stabilisation and so does this. I don't recommend using either of them because it's not great on either. So that's the menu on that one. But on this one, they've much more... They've done a much more updated menu. Let me just flick into it. So as you can see, the menu is much more easy to use. Much easier to adjust stuff and turn things on. Everything's in one place now. So you can do your image resolution. So for your camera, you've got 20 megapixels. The camera actually isn't that bad. It's not the best in the world, and don't get me wrong. And if you're watching this video expecting a GoPro, kind of quality, then I'm sorry, that's just not going to happen. It, it just doesn't have that kind of picture. So if you go into video resolution, you've got 4K 24 frames a second, 2.7K 30 frames a second, 1080p 60 frames per second, and 1080 30. 720, 120, exact, etc, etc. So it's got a lot of settings on here, They're exactly the same as they were on the 700, but I much prefer this menu. And although this screen doesn't look as bright, I think it's a much better screen to use than this one. Although I've nothing, nothing up against it, you can pick this thing up for about 40 quid now or 35 quid, and it's well worth that in my opinion, if you want a cheap cam. So I've got a review coming up shortly on a Nano Talon, and I'm going to put this on the front of the plane, because it don't, it's very little weight. Okay. In fact, let me just weigh it. So with the battery and everything in it, let's turn the scales on. I think the batteries are going on there. Okay, so the weight of this one is 61.1 grams and the weight of the old one was 59.7, so it is slightly heavier. But it's it still weighs less than the GoPro session, so that's what we're going to put on the front. And to be fair, if I crash and this comes off, I'm not going to be that bothered. So what you're interested in is the image quality. So what I've got is I've got a couple of video segments coming up. Um, and I can comparison between that and this. So I've done videos with this and this at the same time. So you can see what the comparison is between the two. And I've also shot in 4K, I think, and various things. You'll see when I do it anyway. I'll have it up on the screen, what, you, what you're looking at and what the resolution is from each camera. I think this comes at about 50 quid at the minute. 
and I, I, I prefer it over this one. I think the image is better. You let me know in the comments if you might prefer the image on this. They're both decent cameras. And like I say, I've actually got three of these. I like them that much. I've actually got three. So this is another A700. So I've actually got two 700s and an 800. If I do, if you see when I do footage and I've got shots downloaded from filming cars and stuff, I use these things because they're just handy to step up with a couple of cheap tripods. I just use these and this one I'm going to use for planes. I might even put it on a quad to have a go with it, but it'll be filmed at 1080 60 because you don't really, the frame rate's nowhere near quick enough to do a quad or plane at the other level. So, yeah, I like it. It's simple enough to use. Power button on the front, shoot button on the top, and then press in to get into your menus, and then up and down your menus with these side buttons here. Very much standard fare. You have a micro USB at the side and I do believe that is a micro HDMI and obviously it come, you need a card for it. It doesn't come with a card. I used a U3 in here and as I used on both. So both of these when you see the film footage are both used on Samsung U3 Superspeed Ultras. So I tried to use exactly the same card so you can get a better comparison. But yep, yeah, I like it. It's good. Thanks ever so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. Test one. So this is 1080p, 60 frames per second, and this is what I expect to be by far the best video resolution to film out with this camera. Certainly wasn't the A700 and I can't see it being much different. The colours on my screen that I'm watching now, which is, by the way is a decent screen, look right. Whereas on the 700 the colours always look too vivid, blues look far too blue, etc. Okay, so that's 1086. Let's just pause it. Okay, this is test two. So this is 30 frames per second at 2K. Let's see what this looks like. So what we should be looking at is dropped frames here. This is where these type of cameras tend to give you a bit of a problem. Check the colours out again. Does it look real? The screen again looks perfect, so it's difficult for me to tell from here. Okay, let's pause it and let's have a look at 4K. Okay, we've got 4K, 24 frames a second. Just pan round. Now, this is where you will get a problem. Any sharp movement, you're probably not going to get away with it, but let's just walk up here, as we have with the others, and have a look. Again, check for the colour clarity and drop frames. Phone test should I say for the A800 against the A700. One thing I noticed straight away the A800 seems to have a brighter screen when you're filming in sun. It might be my imagination, but it does look quite a bit brighter to be honest. And also, the lens looks slightly bigger on the camera. So let's just go for a little walk and see what they look like side by side. So ignore the judder, because that's my unsteady hands. See if there is a massive difference. So yeah, both of these are set to 1080-60, which is the best performance out of either of these cameras. go from light to dark and see what happens. Shaded area.
thanks for watching my channel if you like the video please subscribe and hit the like button and also hit that notification bell there's plenty more good stuff coming up